Hey all how you doing? This is James. I just want to give a big old shout out to my Fox Alien friends that are around the world, the country, whatever. And say thank you for all the help you have been and not just to me but to everybody else. And also to say you all are awesome. Fox Alien, you guys rock. I do want to apologize to Fox Alien. I only have your control board. That's one reason why I'm with your group. Uh, I used your control board to build a bigger CNC, which is fine. Neither here nor there. This is for anybody that has a CNC, whether it be a 318 or a 3018, a 4040, uh, what other, whatever else machine or X Carve. Uh, and you guys don't want feel like paying their monthly subscription for the X Carve. Um, I do not, and I will not um, promote. Uh, Gerbil Candle, even though I do love Gerbil Candle, for anybody that's outside the realm of Gerbil, okay, um, I don't know if X-Carve or whoever else, and X-Carve is the only one that's coming to mind right now, um, and Venables, which is easel, but neither here nor there, so let's, let's move on, so I'm going to apologize right now uh, uh, to those that have newer versions of Inkscape. I personally like Inkscape 0 0.92. Now, I know there's a newer version, 1.02, I believe it is. However, um, I started using Inkscape uh, 0.92, and it works well uh, for G-Code tools. Um, I do have there is an understanding or I do understand or it might be mislead misled that there's a bug in 1.02 uh, with Gerbil tools or G uh, G code tools um, neither here nor that there I'm not gonna either confirm or deny that that's you know if you find there's an issue with 1.02 um, with G code tools move back down to 0.92 but without further ado, I'm just going to move on. So, um, in uh, Google, uh, you can have uh, Netscape, uh, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Edge, or uh, there's a Microsoft Chromanium, I guess they're coming out with. I'm not sure. That's a rumor. Not going to confirm nor deny that. Um, it's not a conspiracy theory, people. I just don't really know. Um, I have read, it, read blogs that says they're coming up with a new... Microsoft's coming up with a new browser. Neither here nor there. Um, when I'm... First off, let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning. When I'm looking for something to carve, and I don't, I, and I don't know what to carve, there's certain things I look for. And, and I think you should too, depending on what you're doing. Now, now laser cutting's different. I, I'm talking about actually using the spindle to carve with. Now, here's an image right here that I brought up. It's on the right side of the screen. Um, it's with the stairs. There's no way in hell I'd try to carve that. There's just too much detail in there and fine areas. And if you're really good and you have really fine tools and you got real and a, and a lot of patience and you're only scratching the surface of your wood. You could probably carve this and make it look awesome. If you got eighth of eighth inch bits and you're cutting this, you're going to find that it's going to be a nightmare. So I look for images that I know I can cut. Now, I can cut one of these birds all day long. <coughs> and this would actually probably be a good image to play with. So I'm actually going to either this one or the rose. It, it, neither here nor there rose i can cut i can carve that i can carve this image down here there's not a lot of detail there, there's one image in here that i can't probably cut real well this right here would probably not cut very well at all either i know this dandelion i could not carve due to the fact that there's too many small error areas and it would just look like a, a weed with balloons on the end of it uh, it, it would try to carve out the black and it would eventually bite into the white unless you're using really delicate tools neither here nor there let's go back to the birds I can carve a bird all day long 
Actually, this bird looks pretty awesome, but there, it's still going to end up... Some of these white areas will be black after the carve is done. Here's an eagle. I can carve that all day long. Okay. Okay, so there was an eagle there. There it is. So let's go back and just grab the image I was looking at initially. And I'm going to save as. Save image as. And bring that image down. I'm just going to call it birds... Uh, it's a PNG. It'll automatically rename the end of it. And I'm just going to say save. With that being said, we found an image. Now, when I'm on a hunt for an image, it's going to take me hours. <coughs> and then I'm going to put three or four of these images together in Inkscape. And that's going to be another video. That won't be today's video at all. So, with that being said, I know where I put it. It was in the downloads directory called birds. I'm going to import. I'm not going to open. I'm going to import the image and look for birds in my downloads there it is right there click open on this screen right here this is your import wizard I'm not gonna touch anything just gonna keep it default and say open now you want just one of these birds but you're sitting there going what the hell there's a lot of birds there it don't matter it really don't matter. I'm going to first enlarge this. I'm going to keep the aspect, aspect ratio, which means percentage-wise, this vertical line or your Y is going to be percentagely or percentage-wise either smaller or bigger than your X. And you're going to do that by hitting and holding your right control button on your keyboard, and you're going to enlarge. If you notice, left to right, up, down, the image only goes out or in or you know you, you you understand what i'm saying so we're going to make this an svg right off the bat we're not going to try to cut these images i'm going to show you that in a minute so we're going to go path with by the by the way keep this in mind anytime you're working with the image it's got to be selected so select your image whether it ha is um your rotation nibs or your expansion nibs now we want to go to path, trace bitmap, update. As you can see, you got all the birds here. It doesn't show good detail, which neither here nor there. And we're going to keep your brightness cutoff threshold at 0 0.450. Now, you can increase it or decrease it depending on how much detail you want into it. I keep it pretty much at default. That way I don't have to worry about it. I can just select OK. Now, I know it's done its job because I look down at the bottom and it says there's a path, not an image. So I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to grab this top layer and move it left to right. Doesn't matter. Looking at the bottom, I have the path selected. So the image that we want to get rid of is this one right here. And you look at the bottom and it says image. All you want to do is hit delete. Now, you notice I'm trying to stay away from that box. I really don't like that box. It just, it drives me nuts. I can make that box bigger, smaller, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, if you notice, I'm moving my cursor. If I want to move it, uh, the image left to right, I just go to the opposite direction. <clears throat> so with that being said, I want, it, I want this eagle. How am I going to get that eagle? Now, I can actually go and select this eagle and be, it's the pain in the butt that way. So undo, I want to select, keep that selected. I want to go to path, I want to break apart. Okay, as you notice, I now all I have is the eagle. I can move this eagle and I now can select the whole image and go to path, combine, and everything's put back together. Now I can do that with each one of these path, Combine now I have another bird, etc. 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 You want to get rid of this image right here, just select to get rid of it. And now you can select each individual component of the birds. I had to say path combined with the image selected. I don't want all that, so I'm just gonna delete all that. I showed you how to get this right here. That's all I want. I want to be able to cut that. So aspect ratio like I said I'm outside of the box the only thing that box is good for in my opinion is just to be able to put a, a preview on a Mac screen in the file system 
I don't think there's a preview for SVGs inside of Windows, but I haven't, I can't be on it. I can't confirm nor deny that. There that is, the conspiracy theory thing again. So with that being said, I just want to save this as an SVG. It is a path. I can verify it's a path by double clicking on it. And I have all these nibs. Each one of these nibs is where uh, a new path for your G code is going to start. <clears throat> and I don't mean it's going to lift up and go down. I mean, there's a start of a curve here, start of another curve here, start of a different curve here, a different curve this way. And you can look at that just by zooming in on the on these and you can see all the different curves and the different paths from nib to nib which is neither here nor there outside of the scope of this video I'm just gonna file save as and call it Eagle now it says SVG I don't have to name it SVG it's SVG now remember the path that you're putting this in okay because you're going to be using this here in just shortly. Save. We're done. You can close this out. Now you're going to open up uh, Easel. And if you're like me, you use it all the time. And we want to bring up an image. Now, I'm still running the free version of this. Which is fine. I've been running the free version for months. I use the same, and I know this is probably not right, but I use the same <coughs> drawing. It's called Campfire. For everything. Now, I don't care because all I'm bringing in is my G code or exporting. So, import SVG. File, import SVG. Make sure there's nothing on your screen. Then, if you're working in inches or millimeters, whatever you're comfortable with is fine. The SVG don't care. If it says it's outside of the scope of the image, that's fine. Just bring it in. And you can adjust everything accordingly later. Because I can make that uh, SVG 80 by 80 and have it four times bigger than this 20 by 20. And I'll, I can change that just by sit here saying 10 by 10. And I think the image that I'm bringing in is a little bit smaller than that, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to import and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So go to file, import, SVG, locate the path where you stored the original SVG. Ah, it's smaller than that. So if it was bigger, I can make that happen. I want to show that error real quick. So my apologies. I'm going to bring this back five by five. That's a real small piece of wood, which is fine. It's five inches by five inches. Your machine will still do it. So file, import, SVG. Bring your eagle in, and for some reason it still didn't tell me that it's outside the scope of the material. Probably because this is outside the scope of the material. That's uh, neither here nor there. So, neither here nor there. And I'll produce that error and show you guys later in another video. So there's the, the eagle. Now, a lot of people are like, how do you know where this is going to start cutting? Well, if you're on Gerbil and you're using Candle, which I do, I use Gerbil Candle. Zero, zero is where you place and zero out your bit. And in order to do that, and it's going to be, I'm just going to give you a little quick on that. I'm not going to tell you how to do it in this video. I'll actually create another video for that one. This zero, zero is your corner. Now, I try to always keep right on the corner, but you notice the beaks on the corner too. And, oops, wrong button. It'll actually miss. It'll actually touch, just barely touch. And you can zoom in on this too and see that there's a that there's just ever so slight space right there. And you can get close. Now, mind you, you'll hit your limit switches if you go to zero zero here, and everything's on a limit switch. Now, I'm going to say that's going to happen because I always position my zero zero one inch from all my limit switches um, and I always give myself plenty of room from all my hold downs too if I'm just carving I you know and this piece of wood that I'm using is gonna get routed anyways or cut around I don't care where I plant the image 
so long as it's within my my boundaries of 2020. So I can move this over and get the cut where I actually want it. So I don't have to worry about anything. And I'm using my cursor keys to move everything around, by the way. Um, at that point, we're almost done. You got your image where you want it. You know that your zero zero is right here. You know you're going to be one inch. You could be one inch off the sides. So there's going to be a one inch boundary here and a one inch boundary here. From where the bottom of your cut to the side of your cut to the edge of your board. If that's what you want. Move it wherever you want because zero zero, your bit's going to start right here on this corner. Okay. Keep that in mind. If you move your bit to the center of this thing, or the center of the wood, the zero zero is still going to be here, and your cut's going to start one inch from your zero zero mark, wherever you plant it on the piece of wood. Now, I'm talking X, Y, and Z. Okay. Um, this is for the X and the Y, the position. If you want to really get into position for your Z, they're in the cut settings. Now, mind you, use a piece of paper and a piece of wood. Zero your Z out on top of the material you're getting ready to cut, not your spoil board. Okay. Your depth of your cut. Let me go back into millimeters because that's what I always work in the millimeters when I'm doing depth of cut. Because I know the wood that I'm working with is three millimeters. Even though it says five here, I notice that keeping this bigger than the wood that I'm cutting don't create. I do not create nibs. And I don't know if there's no nibs in this piece right here. I don't believe no. Uh, I'll show you nibs one of these days. They're they're a pain in the butt. I don't like it. Um, when I do it, when I'm doing a very delicate, detailed piece of uh, of wood. And I've got a lot of cuts and a lot of voids. Uh, it'll start creating nibs. That way, the wood doesn't pop out. It doesn't jump out. It's a pain in the butt, but it works. Depth of cut is where you're going to want to... The, correction, let me rephrase that. Depth per pass, not depth of the cut. Depth per pass. If you're at three millimeters... And you got 0.8 millimeters. And it's going to take four passes to cut three millimeters because it's only cutting 0.8. 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 is 1.6, and then 2.4, and then 3.2. But that last cut's only going to be 0.8 deep. It's not going to, or 0 0.6, 0 0.06, or 0 0.6. It's not going to cut all the way through. It's only going to cut up to three millimeters or well, in this case 2.9 three millimeters. It will cut three millimeters. That last cut's going to be narrower than the rest just to equal to three millimeters. Okay with that being said let's send a machine. Actually we don't send a machine on this one. All I do is I generate g-code because I use Gerbil Candle. So I come in and let me do that again. I go to machine, I go to advanced, I go to generate G code, and then the export G code is how I do it. That's simple. And I can name this whatever. Doesn't matter. Now, next time I open that up, it will be in my uh, Gerbil candle, and we're done. Now, there's one thing I didn't explain. This is a, I should have explained it and I apologize I didn't, but I'm going to go over it right now anyways. If you look, you see a bunch of lines. This is cutting the pocket out at eighth of an inch bit. Now, there's a lot of lines in there. That, this cut's going to take a long time. Um, two hours, it says, just to cut that out. Now, that is some fairly high rates at 600 millimeters a minute that's pretty fast but it's still going to take two hours so when we have like I said in Inkscape if you're going to work with an image have it selected 
So you can do multiple images on this one screen. Each has their own depth or their cut and their shape and all that. So on this cut path, there's three, there's four of them. Okay. You got clear out the pocket. It's going to clean everything that's black. You got cut on path. It's going to cut on the path. If you notice, there's a line here in the middle between the wings. It's going to have it's going to have a little void right here, which is very narrow. We don't want that. We want to cut on inside of shape. You'll, I'll see what you're talking. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Inside that void got a little smaller. Now you see there's a difference here. Now if you cut on the inside it's going to make your image smaller. If you cut on the outside okay as you can see it's cutting the outside of the path so uh, you're going to lose a little detail on the outside uh, but you're going to have the exact dimensions that you wanted. If you cut on the inside you're going to still retain some detail but it's going to be a smaller image. So choose wisely. Use the the detail pane here to be able to view everything. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and I know it's probably a little scattered thought. I wasn't, I didn't think this out. I just wanted to get it done on how I do things. Hopefully this helps you all out. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.